Hello everyone, this is Helen H and welcome to my channel, Moss Cottage. I hope everyone is doing well today. We've got a fun little watercolor project to do today and it does not matter the quality of your watercolors at all. Um, I'm just using this cheap Derwent Academy set today instead of my Pelicans because there's too many colors in the Pelicans and just for this I don't want to have to really think about picking colors. So. What we're going to be doing is making some ephemera. And these right here are some papers that I got a long time ago. Um, and they are just little note papers or to be used for journaling spots. You can tear them up and use them in collage. And I ordered these from a Japanese company uh, years ago. And I think these are the, actually the only ones that I have left. But I have a video way, way back when, if you search in my search, uh, uh, search bar, where I made, I said, well, I can pretty much do that. So I did that. So in my video, I show how I made all of these delicious, delicious watercolor journaling cards and stuff. So I thought we would make some of these again today and maybe we'll do a little variation on some of these. I did, now these are all done on a quality of paper that's like a computer paper, you know, a very thin paper. And then these ones I made at the crop recently that I went to and these are actually on a mixed media paper. So these are a lot heavier. So, you know, they're going to add bulk if you're going to use them uh, in your projects or whatever. But I don't care because sometimes I do like to have the um, textured pieces and some, some pieces that are, are standing up on the surface versus being stuck completely flat, if that makes any sense. All right, we're going to put these aside. And I'm going to show you how to make them because this is so not rocket science. So let's go ahead and get our colors wet. Um, besides these Derwents, I think I'm also going to use my Twinkling H2Os, um, which are, oh gosh, these are from back in the day. I think I took these to, with the, uh, to the crop house with my friends. And I think that these were one of the first art supplies I ordered when I got back into art as an adult in like 2008 with the twinkling H2O's and I know one of the colors is missing I it might be red um, I don't know what happened to it just disappeared but anyway so I've got my water here and I've got my paints and this we're gonna start out with is just a piece of computer paper uh, this is just uh, absolutely cheap bog standard computer paper. So you can decide what colors you wanna do and how big you're gonna do it. We're just gonna do like a, a basic one to start with. And so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and start at the bottom. See this this paper is just really not good for, for doing this. I'm, I'm gonna show you, I'll show you, you know, what like what the differences are. And these paints are just so not like my pelicans because these are not that pigmented. But that's okay. That's okay. We can use, we, we're we using what we have. And see, if you don't use a water, uh, water, a paper used for, for wet mediums, it's they're not going to blend. They're just soaking right into the paper. So that's what that looks like. And this this is really a dismal result because this this is not even a decent computer paper. So we're just not even gonna go there. This is a little bit better computer paper. So let's give this one a go here instead. And I'm, I'm almost thinking I might have to get my Pelican paints out because these Derwents, oh no, they're okay. They're okay on this paper, okay? You can see the difference here. So I'm gonna do that same color again. Of course, you can you can pick whatever colors you want, obviously. And see, even though this is a what this is not a watercolor paper, it is still allowing me to blend the colors together. And then, oh, okay. Well, if I had washed my brush, that would be yellow. Okay, there we go. Kind of a lighter color there. Okay. 
So you can see the difference between that one and that one. I mean, this one still works. Don't get me wrong, if all you have is computer paper, use that, but this works better. And I really got that wet, but it doesn't matter, you know, because you're gonna be cutting these out. So, um, yeah, that doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and make a couple more um, on this paper. Now, one thing I, I did do here is I made the mistake of going all the way to the top. I've made, I made these so much and I've, I've cut them at different places, but I realized they really do look better if you have a white border around the edge, which would be fine here, but not up here. That uh, I accidentally went off the edge. But I do like the look of them with the white border, but if, you, if you're gonna use them for collage or something and you don't think you want the white border, then go ahead and paint all the way to the sides or cut them out you know, just to the uh, edge of where you painted, right? Um, I'm going to make an executive decision right now. We're gonna kill those watercolors and I'm just leaning over and I'll just have to deal with the, uh, deal with the decision making here for the colors. I'm using these ones instead. Okay, so let's go ahead and make some more because they're not all going to be that they don't all have to be like the same shape and stuff like that so i was thinking let's go ahead and do one that uh, look at my colors they're just they fell out so they're like all in disarray let's do one see the see the color difference between the pelicans and the other let's just do one that is variations of blue and just do it we can do it like this. We'll join this one together, but we have other options too that we can we can do here. And this blue here is more like a teal. See, it's got it's definitely got more green in it. You can make them how how big you want or whatever. But I'm making a couple because I think that this is a great way to um, make something to tear up to use colored pieces in your collage. I'm just going to go ahead and darken that middle one up a little bit more. Um, just to provide you with colorful strips and stuff to use in your collage. See, now this one, I did it right because I left the white border here. So when this dries and I cut it out, I can have the white border there. But let's, we can also do something else. Let's go ahead and let's make a palette, which, which is uh, super fun. Yeah, see what I did there? Okay. So we're just going to make little... Um, marks colored marks like a paint palette and I'm going to show you how I used some of these well just two of them actually okay I got that one a little bit too close but it's it's okay it's handmade ephemera we don't need to buy ephemera so that could be like a little paint palette in itself or we could go ahead and, um, where is the other part of my paint? Okay, hold on a second. Leaning over again, they fell off, did they? Are you all looking at this? Where's the bottom to my paints? There should be two, okay. All right, well, we're gonna have to use these. There's two stacks of paints. There should be another another layer underneath there, but I don't see it where I got my paints from. Yes, I do, okay. It was hiding. Okay, I was looking for my greens is what I was looking for. It's like, where did they go? Okay, now I don't know if you can see this, but now I have the second palette here. So let's go ahead and do some some greens. If you hear like a, a low ta uh, rumbling sound in the background, please forgive that. That is my, I'm getting new neighbors and they are having someone power wash their house. So that's what you hear. The guys out there today power washing. Let's see. Let's go with the olive green. So I was doing a project yesterday and I was trying, I don't have an olive green acrylic paint. 
and I was trying to make olive green and I was just failing miserably. I, I don't know what color I am leaving out that um, it didn't work. I did not get olive green. Okay, so now we've got this cutie little palette here that we can cut out and we can use that as ephemera. Let's try a different shape. I've always made mine either square-ish or rectangular. Let's try and make a circle, why not? Okay, let's, uh, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use these colors again because let's see, how would I do a circle? Okay, well, we'd make a circle, Helen, so let's go ahead and, can you see? Not really, let me move this up, sorry about that. Ugh. This is the problem with when your desk is the size of a postage stamp. I am looking on Amazon Marketplace to see if I can find a good used desk, um, art desk, a bigger one, because I'm going to be um, revamping my craft space, hopefully this month. See how the, I, I just kind of love blending the watercolor lines together. I mean, that's the whole point of watercolors, right? Okay, I'm gonna, let's see here, what do I wanna do? This, these two are very close in color, so I think I'm gonna go rogue here for the third color and use this olive green. And I'm just gonna make a, so this is not a, it's a journaling spot, but it's a round one. Well, let's say roundish. But I love the way that looks. You see that? That's really cool, I like that. And you know, with watercolors, you can always go back and you know, dot in the colors some more. Um, I, I love watercolors. If you don't have watercolors, um, I highly recommend you get some and play with them because there's nothing like letting the colors just kind of bleed together. And when they dry, they look completely different than when they're wet. So let's make another palette one, and then we're going to um, do another variation too. I don't want to um, make this video too terribly long. Let's go ahead and use the Twinkling H2Os. I haven't used these um, to make this to make these little ephemera pieces before, so let's go ahead and give them a try. Where is my spray? Here it is. I keep thinking Holly's sitting next to my desk. It's not Holly, it is, it's dark. It's my bag that I take when I travel with all my paints and uh, paint markers and another set of watercolor, watercolor crayons. You know, your on the go bag kind of thing. And it's sitting next to me on the floor because I was doing some art journaling this morning and I needed some stuff out of there, but it, just whenever I see something dark sitting right next to me, I assume it's Holly, but it's not. I was gonna say, I hope she doesn't think it's time to eat because I usually make my videos in the afternoon when it is time for her to eat. Was that that? Was that the orange? That wasn't the orange, was it? No, that's the orange. Look how pretty this is. Now you can't tell, you won't be able to tell on camera, and I can't really hold it up until it dries, but these twink twinkling H2Os are um, shimmering. They have shimmer in them, so they, they're really pretty when they dry. Let's go ahead and tap some. And you see, you can tap other colors in too. Like I could tap the, the red into the yellow one if I wanted to, or the orange into the yellow, but I'm just tapping the color into the color right now. Um, just to intensify the color a little bit. So that's cute. Let's go ahead and add some, I, I can't really do a whole palette with the Twinkling H2Os because I only have five colors. Um, well, you know what, yes I can. Let's go ahead and make some colors, shall we? Let's get the blue and green going. 
and let's go ahead and do the blue. Okay, too much water, too much water. This should be a lot darker. Okay, I'll probably end up dotting some uh, more color into that one. The green, I'm gonna go with a whole palette here. And then since I don't have a fifth color, I'm gonna do a, let's make purple. Let's do purple. See, that's what the color, the blue should be. It should be darker like that. So let's go ahead and make that one the blue. And let's make the purple up by the red here. Oops, that's probably way too much red, Helen. What are you doing here? Yep, that's too much red. Okay, no problem. We're just gonna blink some of that out and add a little more blue. There we go. Except it's still very red. I'm trying to make purple. It shouldn't be this difficult. Well, at least it's a different color. <laughs> it is a different color. There we go. That's a little bit more purple. Um, okay, and I'm flicking water all over the ones I've already done here. So, Okay, so let's go ahead and let those dry for a minute. I'm just going to put those over here. Well, where can I put them here? Uh, no, because I need to show you that. Okay, so I'm just going to show you. Oh, I need a flat place to put these. And uh, Holly is sitting here watching me. As soon as I put that on the floor, you know she's going to sit on it. So this is an art journal spread that I did the other day. And see, I had made one of these little palettes, and I used it up here. And then I made a smaller one and used it over here on this side. So I thought that that was kind of cute. But what I have not done, and let me get some of the ones that I've done that are dry here. Because I thought it would be really cute also if, if you're not going to just tear them up to use them for collage and you're going to use them for um, actual journaling spots, why not stamp on them? So I've got a little jar of some peg stamps right here. So let's stamp on these guys and see what we can do here. Let me get my black ink here. And that way you just have to really put the little journaling spot down and you're ready to go. This is Okay, these peg stamps that I'm using are from Nora Jane from Etsy. And I love her little peg stamps. I think they're so cute. And she's got, oh my gosh, hundreds, hundreds of variety to choose from. I've got to remember to put that black, black ink in my Amazon cart. Oops, he's a little at an angle. But look, I've got the little sheep on there. Isn't that cute? And see this one I splattered too. That's so cute. These are so fun. Maybe I'll show um, using these in a collage sometime. Um, I don't have any started collage going right now that I could put these in or I would show you how I would use those in a collage. Uh, let's go ahead and stamp another one. <coughs> Let's use, oh, okay, we've got this cute button here. See, with these peg stamps, they are marked which way is down, so it's not a guess. She has a mark on here so that you can see which way is down. With the button, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do a couple buttons on this one. Look how cute that is, right? Okay, so that's a variation right there of what you can do. Now these guys are still kind of wet, so let's go ahead and put my peg stamps away. I just use those peg stamps because they happen to be on my desk. Let's see here. I guess I can cut this one out. Um, let's, let's see, I accidentally did some 
got some red marks from this on there. Let's carry that a little bit further and let's go ahead and do some, some red marks on it, because why not? Okay. All right, so let's go down here and maybe cut out some of these ones. Or as my scissors. Like I said, you can you can actually um, swatch your whole watercolors, you know, to make palettes or whatever, or um, you know, put together combinations that you like. Right now, this is still very wet, so I'm going to have to be careful cutting this out. But I'm just, I'm just going to kind of cut. Uh, I'm not going to make it a solid, sh like a squared off shape. I'm going to kind of go in and out where the colors are and make it um, a little more organic shaped. Let's go around here. Like that. See? I mean, that is so cute, right? That is a cute little piece of ephemera. You can use it as is, you can tear it up, use it in collage. Let's cut this one. Uh, you know what, this one here with the blues and greens, I think we're gonna do different. We are going to make this two different ones. So this is not something, the little palettes are not something I did in the old video that I had, that I made. I didn't do the little palettes. And I love the little palettes. And I'm the reason um, I'm I'm revisiting these again is because I'm back into watercolor, and I'm into collage, and these work well with both. You know, you get to play with your watercolors, but it makes little pieces that you can use in your collage. How cute, right? Right? This is not difficult, but look at the cutie little ephemera you can make. So let's go ahead and cut out the one that I just dotted. This one here. We'll cut this out the way I cut the other ones out, which was kind of just very loosely following the little bumps and stuff. I mean, I'm not even trying to keep the white necessarily the same width. I'm just cutting. Because with watercolors, it's it's all about the flow and stuff. I don't want it really... Um, see? I like these. And then the round one, like I said, I have never done a round one before. But the possibilities are endless, guys, with these things. Absolutely endless what you can do. So I'll show you. Let's, let's, let's do a little something something if we can. This is still a little bit wet. Okay, this one I'm not going to fuss with right now. Okay, let's, let's do something here. Um, hold on. I am trying to find something uh, that has some kind of substance to it. A piece of paper. No, I'll tell you what we're going to use. We are going to use my collage book. Why not? Let's use the collage book. Let's use some of these in here. Remember this? This is the one I just did, the video of the girls. And Let me get rid of, rid of my paint so I can move everything up. So you can see what I am doing. I know, another stellar video by Helen, right? <laughs> okay, so we got these cutie little girls. They're still in there. Let's see where I might want to do some collage here. Okay, this is promising. This page right here, we've got a lot of these blues and greens going on. Um, but hang on a second because re actually right next to me, I have some more blues and green, blue and green things. And I think I have some black and white, which is always a good thing to also have. All right, quick collage. This was not going to be anything to do with, with what we're working on today. Uh, it was just going to be about making those um, 
ephemeras. And all right, all right, we're just gonna stick. We're just gonna stick. I'm, it, this is probably not gonna be a stellar collage because I'm, I don't wanna take a huge, huge amount of time. But let's see what we can come up with, okay? You know, so here's something that we all have to remember, especially those of us who do YouTube videos. Our art journals, our junk journals, you know, whatever, collage books, glue books, whatever. The point of them, number one, should be that we're having fun making them. It should not be the end result and what is YouTube going to think, you know, when I, when I put this up, right? What, what, how, what are other people going to think about it? Who cares, right? You're making it for yourself. You should be making it for yourself anyway. Okay, this, like I said, this isn't going to be a, a stellar collage, but I just want to show you how fun these little thingy, thingy things can be. And this one's actually still wet, but I'm going to hope that this glitter art glue will hold. Alrighty. So that one I'm using whole. This is a piece of painting paper from Birdie the Retired uh, Hippie Trick Chick. No, the Recycled Hippie Chick. I'm sorry, Birdie, but she is retired, so hallelujah to that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, let's just go for it. Why not? Why not? Or should we use... No, that the colors are not... Are, clashing on this piece so we're not going to use that. Birdie, I was using your pieces, some of your painting paper that you gifted me in some art journal play that I was doing. Okay, yeah, that's going sideways. That's okay. This looks like it's some kind of plan from a neighborhood or something. I don't know. Now, we could go with the blues, or we could go with the greens, or we could go with the blues and greens. No, let's just stick with the greens on this one. Let's just stick with the greens. Let's just put it right there. Normally, I wouldn't be using this strong glue, but like I said, because this, this paint paper is still wet, I'm going to use this and put that there. Now, I'm not going to necessarily say that collage is finished, but it shows you how you can make these pieces for your collage with watercolors, how easy it is, and how good it looks, you know, to do that. I think there's probably one thing we can do right away to say that this is finished. I have my gold watercolor. This, I don't know what the name of it is. I threw the packaging, the package insert part away, uh, but I, I just got it off of Dick Blick. Um, if you put in gold watercolor. Now I need to find my fan brush, and this is, this is, oh, there it is. This is always a trick. I don't know why that thing hides in my cup. All right, let's go ahead and do a little bit of gold splattering. And then we can probably call this collage done. It, I love this gold. It is so um, saturated with gold. Let me, okay, let me move everything else out of the way here. Oh, I love it. Yes, yes, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see that gold because this paper is coffee stained, so it's taking some of the yellowy away, but the shine is definitely still there in the dots. So there you go. This is how to use these little things. So guys, super easy, right? Get out your watercolors, get out some paper, just make little palettes or just the little journaling card shapes. I had splattered some here, like this one here. 
And I actually do like them on the thinner paper, on uh, the copy. Now, this is a better quality copy paper. This isn't the, the disaster that I used the cheap, cheap one, which didn't really work um, so well. This is a little bit better than that, um, and that seems to work just fine. Like I said, I did make it on heavy-duty watercolor paper, but that is going to, you know, when you apply that, that's going to be, it's never going to be flush flat on the page. It's going to just add some texture. So guys, I hope you give this a try. Super easy way to make some collage fodder um, and uh, play with your watercolor. So two, two bonus things right there, collage fodder and watercolor play. So I hope you liked this video, guys. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I ask that you do. And until the next video, guys, I hope you're all truly blessed. Bye-bye.